Hi everybody, Miss Bell Tree here. I'm so excited that Blood Bowl 3 finally has Wood Elves on its roster. It's the one I've been waiting for the most. I know lots of people have different teams that are their favourites, but if you've been watching me on YouTube or Twitch for a while, or if you know me in person, you'll know that I came to Blood Bowl first through Wood Elves back in 2017-ish after the, the previous edition of the game came out when I was introduced to the game they were my first team they're still the team I love the most so having them in Blood Bowl 3 is a massive thrill for me um, and uh, I've already been streaming them a little bit I've had a couple of streams on Twitch and you can head over there if you'd like to catch up with how I've been doing but I know a question I'm going to hear a lot in the days and weeks ahead is what is your favorite starting wood elf roster so i thought i'd just do a little youtube video showing everyone um what i like to do with uh, wood elves and what i think the best starting rosters are <laughs> sorry if you get splashing noise in the background my little dog is just taking this moment to go and have a, a loud drink in the background but this is obviously the Blood Bowl 3 client, and as you can see, what else have been added to the team list? You do have to unlock them, which you can do either by uh, completing the Blood Pass for the season, or you can pay some Warp Stone. Uh, 1,000 Warp Stone will unlock what else right away, and you can get straight to playing them, so you can guess which way I've gone. So, what else straight in, and uh, we'll select what else starting roster now. Oh, no we won't. I've clicked the wrong team. We'll select Wood Elves and then we'll call it the team just for now, Wood Elves starting roster. Now, one new feature and they've added this new season in Blood Bowl 3. Uh, we're into season four of Blood Bowl 3. Um, they've added some more default roster builds. So you've always got the option of just building your own roster manually. Um, they've also given some new roster builds for each team to try to help players, I think, who are less familiar with roster builds to get their teams going straight away i have to say i've had a look at these roster builds and i'm not a big fan of the ones they've got forward elves um i'll i'll show you a quick um for instance so my preferred starting build with wood elves i think um and i'm still working some of this out for myself which i think is the the actual most effective one to use for me because of course, I've been used to using Wood Elves a lot in the old rules of Blood Bowl, um, and uh, things have changed a bit with the new rules, but I think that the most effective starting roster in most settings, and again, that's another thing to consider, what is your setting? Is it a ladder? Is it a league? How many games are you going to get to play on a team? But I think it is the two reroll build. However, when we go to the War Dancers two rerolls build, this is not the build that I would do. So let's click on it so I can show you. Um, so the bit that I agree with on this roster, I think without question, when I'm building any Wood Elf team, the non-negotiable thing is two War Dancers. Uh, I think that no matter how difficult it might seem to justify spending 125000 out of your team value on one player at the start, no matter how much you might think, oh, I'd like the tree, I'd like the catch, I'd like the thrower, these simply are the best players in Blood Bowl out of the box. There's no player with a starting stat line that's as good as what board dancers get movement eight strength three agility two plus yes the armor is, is a little low and passing on them doesn't happen as easily as it used to but movement eight strength three and agility two is, is an amazing set of stats to start off with when you combine them with block and dodge skill right away you also have leap skill and uh, leap is less good than it used to be it's one of the big changes that Games Workshop made to Wood Elves um, when they relaunched the, the game, when they uh, came out with a new edition in 2020, is they made the leap skill significantly less good because it didn't use to take account of tackle zones at all. It used to just use your agility uh, statistic and and had a um, a role on that with no modifiers for how, for how the agility statistic worked at the time. Um, but now you have a negative modifier on it for every tackle zone that you are jumping from or into. So it's a little bit complicated how they have worded it in the rule book. But in essence, when you're making a leap over an opponent uh, in the new rules, you start with your agility, which in this case is a two plus, and you add a plus one to the roll for leap skill. So it becomes a one plus, um, but then you subtract one 
uh, well, you look where you're leaping to and where you're leaping from, and whichever square has more tackle zones of opponents on the square, so either the square you're leaping out of or the square you're leaping into, whichever square has more tackle zones, uh, you're going to apply a, a negative modifier by that number of tackle zones. So say you're leaping into a square that has two opponents next to it, you'll apply a minus two modifier. So we started at one plus, into two tackle zones would make it a three plus. Uh, into three tackle zones, which I guess is the, the standard cage, becomes a four plus, and so forth. Uh, the only slight variant on that, which just to make it even more confusing, is um, you will always have at least a minus one, uh, regardless uh, from your starting agility. So the best you will ever get on this player if you're doing a leap now that is different to a jump over or you jump over a prone player, but as long as you're jumping over um, an actual standing opponent, you're always going to have a three plus be your best role. The only way you're going to make that better is by making uh, this, um, give the player the stat up and upgrade and give them a, a one plus agility. So they will always be leaping on a three plus at best. And then after that, you're counting the tackle zones and seeing how bad it will be. But there's still... A very useful skill you definitely will get some use out of leaps so a huge recommend for um starting with two wall answers i think if you don't you're not starting with two wall answers you really are not getting the most that you can out of what else but where i differ from this starting roster so they've got the two rerolls and they've got the two wall answers i think leaving this twenty thousand in the bank when you could uh, get rid of one of these um linemen and have a catcher instead i think is I think that's a, a real missed opportunity. Catches, I know some people get spooked. I think I would really like empathize with you guys. Like when I first started playing with else, I was scared about string two. It seemed bad. It seemed like, oh, every time I get hit, my opponent's gonna have two dice. I can't use that player to do many blocks. Um, really don't be scared off by this strength two. I promise you that once you've played this team a bit and you get used to it, you will see this is not a hindrance at all. Um, the movement is huge and starting with dodge skill is really, really important, especially when you're starting a team with only two rerolls. Obviously, if you spin into dwarfs, um, a tackle heavy team, it's going to reduce the benefit you get from these three dodge skills. But any other team that you could spin into at starting team value, uh, dodge skills is, is a huge, huge asset. You're changing a dodge, a standard dodge, on a two plus, you're changing that from a one in six fail into a one in 36 fail. Uh, that's a, a massive difference that will completely transform your turns, will allow you to use these players at the start of turns and consider dodging them before you're doing anything else with your team without having to worry about whether you're going to spend to reroll. On top of that, I just can't stress enough if you're going to make the most out of Wood Elves, the reason that Wood Elves are such a good team. Everyone thinks about the Agility 2 Plus, and yes, the Agility 2 Plus is huge, but the reason why Wood Elves stand out from all the other Elf teams is the movement. Um, I always say on my stream, more movement, more better, and I mean it. Honestly, repositioning is your friend. That's going to be how you uh, beat opponents. They're going to be there thinking, oh, how did they roll all those two pluses? Why are they making all these dodges? But the real secret is that you're going to be in better positions from them turn to turn because of the extra movement that you have. And for that reason, I would want as much movement eight as I can have right away, unless we're getting the tree, which is a whole different conversation. Um, but uh, I, I really think that extra movement makes a big difference. So for me, this is a two reroll build. This is what I started with my local tabletop league. I think it's a really um, viable starting uh, build. Um, I think your first purchase, which you might even be able to get after game one, is the Apothecary. And then after that, you have lots of great choices. You can be looking at how many injuries you've taken as part of your what you're considering. But I would probably be looking to add the second catcher next, then maybe the tree man, then maybe a thrower, but also the third reroll at some point in there as well. So I think I would probably, again, be thinking about what my playing environment is Um Am I facing a lot of tackle? How valuable is that extra dodge? How many players have I lost? How many journeymen have I got on the pitch? So all those things would, would play into um, my decisions. Obviously, if you lose the ward answer, then that becomes an immediate priority is just saving up to replace that as quick as you can. But yes, I think the apothecary would be your first purchase here. And uh, and then after that, you have a lot of great options. So this is a, a really nice starting build that's, that's super versatile. Um, I think you... 
I was going to say you can't go wrong with this build. Of course you can get wrong with this build. In fact, when we started the new season, I tried doing this build. And in my very first game, I spun into dwarves and they caused two permanent injuries on the line of scrimmage. And you know what? Sometimes you just have to laugh and say, well, that's blood bowl. Um, but I think it's a really good starting build for what else. Um, and for sure, I would take it over the... Um, over the version that they're offering you. So that's my preferred build, but let's show you some others. Um, a lot of people were interested in on my stream and we ended up doing as our second team, uh, the no reroll build. I think of any team in Bud Bowl, what else might be, I don't know if they're the number one, because I suppose there might be some teams that I'm not thinking of, but they're, they're certainly one of the very best for starting with no rerolls if you want to go that way. now. I, I really need to qualify that by saying I don't think that in general, unless you're a very confident player, that starting with no rerolls is the way to go. Um, when you start with no rerolls, you leave yourself open to just bad luck. If you're, if you throw a couple of double skulls, and that's that. You, it can cost you games, and and you can try to play as safely as you can. There's no way to play so safely that you roll no dice in a game of battle. Um, so if you if you go for this build. The chance of just getting unlucky and and hurting yourself is is strong but but having said that it's it's much more possible to do well with this than it would be for lots of other aces in blood bowl um again i don't like the version that um blood bowl 3 suggests this is the version they suggest with um two board answers a thrower and two catches and an apothecary now i get it the apothecary you want it it's definitely one of the first purchases you're making um, and having two ward answers, you want it really as quick as you can. But I think this roster will not do well enough to justify having no rerolls. So I think if you're doing no rerolls, you've got to lean all the way into it. You've got to say goodbye to that apothecary. You've got to say goodbye to one of the linemen. And you can probably guess where I'm going with this. You can get the Lauren Forest treatment, which... Of course, as Miss Spelltree, I'm very enthusiastic for anyway. Um, but I think we can make a really strong argument for, for doing this build. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, the, the tree man, the number one advantage of having the tree man, just to say like right away, is that it reduces the number of hits that your elves take. I think when people see it and when people think big guy, what they're hearing in their brain is, oh, I'm going to have a big strong piece. It's going to have mighty blow. We're going to smash up the opposition. And yes, sometimes that mighty blow is going to do great things for you. Um, any removals that you can get when you're playing wood elves are great because in general with wood elves, you expect to end up with fewer players than your opponent because, hey, we've got armor eight plus and most teams have higher than that. Uh, so anytime the Mighty Bow does do some work, it's amazing and uh, and you love the tree for it. But that's not the number one thing that you're thinking of with it. The number one thing that you're thinking is when you line up on defense, you put a strength six piece on the line. And I have some uh, recommendations about how you use that on the line, which I guess we can talk about maybe in another video. Um, I certainly talk about it all the time in my games I play. Um, I'll, I'll leave that for another day. But but just having that as one of your three pieces you're going to put on the line on defense, on defense is huge. A lot of teams simply won't try to, to block it because it's strength six. If your opponent has all strength three players, it requires a huge commitment to try to block that. Um, if they do knock it down, it's armor 11 plus. It's very unlikely to get removed by a, a block, at least until opponents have claws. Um, and uh, if they do decide to commit to knocking it down, they're generally going to bunch a lot of players' clothes together to knock it down, um, which has another advantage, which is forcing them to bring a lot of their team close together on the pitch. Because again, as I was saying before, movement is your friend, positioning is your advantage with what else. So if they bunch up a lot of their team together trying to knock the tree down, that's going to give you so much pitch to take advantage of, whether it's offense or defense. Um, you know, if they do that, then you get a deep kick. You might create some great opportunities to go and pressure the ball while they've got all of their players forward committed to knocking over a tree that they probably won't remove anyway. So I really like the tree. I love it on defense. I think that's the number one uh, advantage of it is, is the number of hits it saves you from taking. And then when it is getting knocked over, you're having that knocked over instead of an armor eight plus piece knocked over. And over the lifetime of a team, you really notice how it does reduce the number of injuries you take on a wood elf team. So that's the number one strength of it. It's also great on offense, though. Um, of course, it means at the start of every uh, drive, 
you will get a mighty bow hit. Um, I strongly, strongly recommend in almost all games trying to make sure that you take that first book on three dice because you really don't want to roll a two dice block and roll that one in nine and, and have it fall over. Uh, so look for those three dice opportunities at the start of a drive to get the pow. And then I think it's a really helpful piece on offense for um, giving you somewhere to pivot around. And again, these are concepts I think we can talk about in a different video because I have a specific ways that I use my tree man, for instance, when I'm doing the Dacker offense, which I've done a guide to before. Um, and uh, I have specific ways that I use it in other kinds of offense. So I think it's a really useful piece. It's great for hiding your rails behind pivoting left and right. One of the ways that you'll find yourself doing offense a lot with all elf teams is trying to draw your opponent to one side of the pitch, then go to the other side of the pitch. And again, using that movement and that agility to, to reposition and, and get around them. Um, and, and the tree is just like this big obstacle that your opponent finds uh, finds themselves having to run around. So great to be able to start with the tree. In this build, we've still got our two war dancers. We've got two catches, which is brilliant. Again, more movement, more better, uh, more dodge skill, which it's still only four, but at least it's four dodge skill when you're starting with no rerolls. These are the pieces you're going to be dodging first. You're going to be very happy to have that one in 36 fail state instead of the one in six fail state. So you love the catches and having two of them. And if it was the old rules, I would consider taking a third catcher. But in the new rules, um, where no one can pass on a two plus, I'm definitely taking the thrower. And the, the real reason I'm taking the thrower, and, and perhaps the reason why you should take the thrower, even in the old rules, is actually not even because of the two plus passing. It's because you've got no rerolls and you're going to try to get this player to lead a skill as quick as you can. So you can, um, unlike with all of these players, you actually can try to do some vanity passing on this player. You can start drives by picking up on this one, throwing to a player with catch. You've got the pass skill built in. You've got the catch skill built in. You're going to try to get this player as quick as you can to the first level and then you take leader and then that will help you with the fact that you haven't started with rerolls. Very obviously, I'm sure no one needs to be told this, but the first thing you're saving for if you do this build is the reroll. Um, I think, um, I, do you know what? I'm talking rubbish. The first thing you're saving for is still the apothecary. After the apothecary, as soon as you've got the apothecary, you're saving for rerolls. You do still need that apothecary. This is helping you reduce attrition, but you still need the apothecary because dead war dancers can kill a team. Apothecary first. Reroll second, reroll third again, and then after that you can start looking at um at what what your situation is. Um, the only exception to that reroll third probably is again if you've lost a ward answer you have to replace it because without the ward answers you're not getting value for the team. But um, but yes, once you've got two rerolls here, maybe you've got a leader here, then we're thinking about oh do we want another catcher? Do we want um to increase our roster to more than eleven players? All those sorts of conversations, but. Again, by that point, things would have happened, players would have died, you'll have some development and and the questions get a lot more dependent on on those things and, and what your playing environment is like. So that's two of the builds you can do with uh, Wood Elves. Uh, I think the last one, as far as I'm concerned, is this one. Um, this is, um, again, I think, uh, well, I'm actually not entirely sure what they've done for their versions. So let me have a look at what they've done because uh, I may end up disagreeing with them again. Uh, yeah, so again, similar here to what I would do, but not actually what I would do. I think this is the same as with the first roster. I just think you're crazy uh, here not to take the catcher instead of a lineman. They have 20,000 left in the bank in their version. So I say, don't do that. Get rid of a lineman. You've got plenty of lineman. Get a catcher and uh, enjoy the fact that you've got more movement more movement more better i'm just gonna keep saying it and that you've got um and that you've got uh three dodge skill the dodge skill is really going to help you i i think there's a real chance that i will come around to this being my favorite build and um, this is, was my favorite build again in, in the 2016 rules just because i love having that treatment right away um, and you are still getting the same number of positionals other than that um on your roster you're just going to have to wait for that first re for that second reroll but starting with two rerolls is um starting with one reroll sorry is is a lot better than starting with no rerolls no rerolls really does leave you so open to just one bad double scale running running everything at least this way you have some sense of i can try to um 
I can try to be super cautious, but when I really need to throw that reroll, I will be able to. So, so those are my starting builds. Um, I, uh, I'm going to try to do a couple more of these sorts of mini guide videos just to talk through things um, with Wood Elves. I keep talking about trying to do a, a one turning guide, although there's some other great ones out there already on YouTube. But I know it's content that people um, have asked me for. Um, but please do drop any questions you've got in the comments below and I will try to get back to them. And in the meantime, uh, do come join us over at twitch.tv forward slash Miss Tree if you'd like to see my live streams as and when they happen. All right, guys. See you later.